to start out? You want to start? I'll start. Right. Or we can continue with the music. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Weekly Flare Podcast, episode 22. I'm your host, James Walter, and with me is Chris Garcia. <laughs> that was really fast today. All in one big breath. <laughs> Chris, how you doing? Good. Tired. Good. Tired. Chris, something crazy to me happened today at work. It was so traumatic, I almost came home early. Okay, so I'm in the bathroom. Just going to the bathroom, minding my own business, right? And my belt, like, just smacks the toilet, and I'm like, great. Now I have to grab my belt to tighten my belt. And I was thinking, maybe I should just throw my belt away. This Mm. is disgusting. My my belt has now, like, rubbed all over the toilet. It's contaminated. I should just throw it away. But no, I had to go back to work. So I just put my belt back on. It's gross. You're wearing it now? No, different belt. Okay, good. It was disgusting, though. Uh, why don't you wear the, uh, your, the belt you're wearing now to work? I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow because mm-hmm. I haven't gone to buy a new belt. But it was gross. And so it was traumatic. And all day I was just like, uh, uh. Mm. It, yeah, it was disgusting. And luckily it like didn't get like anything on it. But still, it touched a public toilet. That's yeah. disgusting. So your butt does all the time, too. No, my butt does not touch public toilets. You got to do the hover. Oh, the hover. Yeah. <laughs> That's gross. That's disgusting. This is disgusting. Let's get out of here. Chris. We'll talk about toilets. How was your week? Oh, yeah, we are talking about toilets. I should have saved it for that. Yeah, I should have saved it for that. could have been a great transition, too. Oh, well. How was your week, Chris? It was okay. Could have been better. Yeah? Yeah. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, okay. This is not good enough to talk about. Not good enough. Not like my story that's gross no, but funny at the same no, time. No, mine is more upsetting okay well we won't talk about it what we will talk about though is some cool stuff we got going on this week to cheer up my mood to cheer you up chris so why don't you tell us about it well we've got two stories i mean if you notice we don't have our tablet today oh yeah rest in peace until i can revive you later. yeah we'll have to put it into safe mode it wouldn't turn on <clears throat> the tablet is in a coma how long have you had it is it like that's the one we used to do repairs on no i that one i've only had that I don't know, six, seven months. What happened to the other one you had? That one died during a charging cycle. I plugged it in and it was booting up and it came unplugged while I was booting. That's not good for computers. I didn't know that. Yeah, don't do that. Once they start booting, you gotta let them boot all the way up. Mm. Don't pull the plug. That's what happens usually. It kills it. You can do anything? You gotta get a new whole new no, motherboard? No, it was just completely. Yeah, we've had to replace the whole motherboard and it was, it, it was not worth that much. Mm. So, it's coming to tablet. So this tablet is now dead. I have to revive it. Hopefully. We're going to do everything from memory today. So we're going. Yeah, Tris, going. Story okay. number one. I'm not happy about it. You're but not I happy gotta, about the story? No, I'm not happy that we have to do it by memory. Oh, come on, Chris. We're talking about the dude that gives blood for the last 60 years. We've got a dude here that started in 1955. Dude. He's now 78 years this old. This dude is old. He's older. He's old as dirt. Maybe. Might be a little I don't know. How old is Dirt? Uh, 6,000 years old? Probably. Yeah. Who knows? So he's not quite as old as Dirt. But he's 78 years old. And he's he's been giving blood since he's... He said for like 60 years. Since he's 18? I guess. Yep. He's 78 now, so about 60 years. Uh, but he's got this specialized type of blood. He's got special blood. Special it's blood. not superhuman, but it's pretty close. It helps, um, I guess, a certain type of uh, disease... Right. Is rice? 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 How do you pronounce rice disease? Ruis? Rice? I don't, something I don't like that. I it's, didn't go to it's med found, school. It's found on a lot of pregnancies, um, and these babies are, uh, I guess the blood that he has helps, is it cure? or is it, it helps, it, yeah, it basically helps him cure it. Mm-hmm. It's, it helps fight off the infection, basically. Yes. So the so, kids can be healthy. How many people has he saved? Did he say uh, like, two million? They, they estimated probably like two million babies. Because I guess it doesn't take a lot of blood or either. He gives a lot of blood when he gives blood. So that's a lot of babies. Yeah. But the um, funny thing about it. He, he apparently does not like needles. He doesn't or like seeing blood. So he does this because he knows that his blood uh, is special, I guess. But I don't know how he figured it out. Like, did he go give blood one time? Or, like, do you think he was having surgery? Or... How do you think he figured out that his blood was special like that? That's a good question to ask him. I know. It wasn't in the story, at least not that I saw. So, have you ever wanted to, like, donate bone marrow or plasma, or have you ever? I've given blood before, maybe, like, once, I think. We went with some, I went with some friends in high school to give blood, 
And uh, my one friend was so mad because they had gone before previously and I wasn't able to go with them. She was so mad because she didn't have enough iron in her blood or something like that. So she couldn't give blood. So the next time before we went, she was just like eating like all this like wheat bread before we went. Like she just like ate like half a loaf of it because she's like, I'm giving blood this time. Didn't so we, yeah, yeah, I guess. So we went and gave blood. Um, I don't remember ever getting like the card that they usually send you mm -hmm. that says like, thanks for giving blood. Here's like your blood type, all that kind of information. Um, so I have no idea as to what blood mm -hmm. type I have. Uh, I guess it's nothing super out of the ordinary because they never pester me about giving blood. So I imagine if it was something that was hard to get or that could like be universal that they would like be asking me all the time to donate blood and they've never once done that. Would you do so, it again? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it, was a, it wasn't like anything magical. You just go, you sit down, they like look for some veins, which mine are really easy yeah. to find, so... They love it, and uh, they, you know, you just sit there for a little bit, and then when you're done, you sit down, eat some, some crackers or some cookies or whatever, drink some juice, and they send you on your way. I went to go donate plasma because I was broke one time, so I was trying to get some money. So you got like $40 a week? Yeah, yeah. something like that. And they couldn't find my veins. Well, that's a bummer. They didn't do like the smacky trick, and like, where you go like this, and then like... Yeah, they did everything, I guess, you know. That's weird. I want to retry. It's been about three years since I've tried. Yeah, usually they can get like I don't know. Mine's like yours is over there. Popping. No, I'm, I'm Bane. <laughs> would you ever like get a bone marrow? Yeah, take it out? it's painful. I, I would give bone marrow. Like I wouldn't do it just because like I needed money. Like there's a ton of other things I would do if it was just because I needed money. But like if I could like help somebody, I would. Though. Yeah, definitely. It's like a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's a hundred dollars I don't need. I mean, like I said, I wouldn't do it for the money. I would do it like if someone, like if they, like if I was there and they're like, hey, can you give to help save this person or like we're short or something like that. Like, yeah, the money would be nice for like the, you know, the pain of the bone marrow being extracted, but like. What's the farthest you'd go? Would you donate a kidney? Yeah, donate a kidney. If you had to. Or yeah, if, if you have to. You only need one technically, right? Yes. I mean, from what I've heard, Selling organs is illegal in the United yeah, States. Yeah, you can't sell organs. But it's That's... like ten grand for a. Is it like ten no, grand? I wouldn't. For a I, don't, I don't know. I don't check out the black market, Chris. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, we, I don't don't we don't promote that here. <laughs> That's wrong I, and weird. I think I would donate my kidney. No, I would, I would donate an scary. organ if if an organ. Yeah, that's how you say that word, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like an organ donor on your card. We'll see. You. <clears throat> so apparently, being an organ donor on your driver's license doesn't actually make you an organ donor there's like a bunch of other paperwork you're supposed to do or i don't know it's supposed to be on mine but it's not because when i got it reprinted they like didn't put it back on there or something i don't know so are you i mean would you be? i would though yeah if someone was like hey um you know like could you like we found out that this person has a kidney that like yours could replace really easily would you be willing to do that i'd be like yeah i mean probably i don't know like Maybe not just like any old random stranger who walked up to me and was like, hey man, can you give me your kidney? But like, you know, the right circumstance. Like, yeah, I would I would definitely consider it. Family, friends usually. Yeah, family, friends. I mean, like I said, it would depend. I wouldn't just like any, probably not like any old random stranger because otherwise I would like be giving my kidney right now because people need organs. Like, yeah. they need kidneys. I guess the issue I would have is I'd be put out of work for a little bit. I'm not like, sure. Yeah. But... Now, I am not an organ donor. Why? Well, you don't believe in helping people? I do. Are I'm you, not selfish. Are you taking but, organs with you to the grave? Uh, that seems ridiculous. I don't want to be like, well, he's almost dead. <laughs> Let's just let him die and take. Yeah, they don't step. do that, Chris. Well, I hope not. That's malpractice. Okay, good. They can't do that. Okay, I was making sure. No. You have to like be dead, dead, deceased. Before they can like. Do you think this? If you were to get pulled over for speeding, which I know you don't speed. No, I do. I do. Yes, you do. Bad do you point. think that they look at that? They say, oh, he's an organ donor. Maybe I should just give him some leeway. No. Hmm. I don't think most cops... Here's the thing. I don't think most traffic cops really enjoy being a traffic cop. Like, think about it. Like, I don't think most people join the police force and are like, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to pull people over all day so they hate me. Like, hmm. I just don't think most traffic cops want to really be being a traffic cop. Like, they're trying to get to whatever cop they want to be. And so, like, when they pull you over, it's probably because, like, either you were really driving reckless... Or, like, you were speeding, and they're like, well, normally I'd let you go, but, like, it's the end of the month, and, like, we have to meet our quotas, if that's actually a thing or not. I don't know. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't think they particularly care too much what's on your ID at that point. Because either you really were driving reckless, or supposedly they have to meet their quota. 
And I'll put that in air quotes because I really don't know. I've never talked to any police officers who are traffic cops that that's actually a thing or not. Yeah. So I, don't, I all, can't say. All the police officers I talked to, they said that they would not have pulled me over for going 11 over like what I did the other. Yeah, but how many of them are traffic cops? All. They start from the bottom. Well, right. They much. say, but are they still Usually cops? from what they've said, this is going a whole different direction. But they say if you're going, for example, 15 over or more, they'll pull you over. If you're going 14 over, that you see them and you slow down, they will not pull you over. But if you're going 14 over see, I think and you don't slow down, they will pull you see, over. I think that's crazy because, like, if you're speeding, you're speeding. Yes. I mean, I now personally, like, I we all I think we can all agree that, that speed limits, especially in, in the United States here, sometimes are slower than they need to be on mm -hmm. some roads. Um, but you're still breaking the law, technically. So most accidents occur at thirty five uh, thirty five miles. So speed. like you know I I get it it's it's a kind of like a lot of speeds are stupid how slow they are but at the same time like there's a reason you know you're still breaking the law so I'm like yeah that sucks that he pulled you over for going like ten over or whatever but at the same time like why are you complaining to me you were the one breaking the law. I don't know I know I'm kind of in the small minority of people who feel that way about yeah. speeding so. I usually don't say anything about it except for you brought it up. So there you go. Now you know how I feel about speeding. So don't speed because I'll have little sympathy for you if you get a ticket. You I'll have a little, but no. You weren't with me. You That's different. Been, you shouldn't have been speeding. That's different. I know you. Okay. But speaking of Miles speeding. Per. Yeah. That was almost a good transition. Yeah, but we killed good. it trying to both transition at the same time. <laughs> speaking of miles per hour. We've got a 15-year-old. Yeah. Who has a brother. A brother. Who has cerebral. Cerebral palsy. Oh, I said that right. This yeah, you got it right. Cerebral this time. palsy. Um, Is he on pause? I'm oh, sorry. That oh. was. He uh, has cerebral palsy, and last year I think his brother. Carried him for 40 miles. Yeah, well, last year. He uh, last carried year. 40 miles. Which is. That's a long time to carry someone on your back. A big accomplishment. Um, That's a long time. I have I have trouble carrying myself a mile, or less. Plus. Less. Yeah. We'll go with that. Ah, probably. Then we're gonna take it back. He goes this year. This year. Fifty seven miles. All out. Three days. Three carries, days. Starts on Friday. Carries him for three days on his back. Doesn't he carry him to the uh cerebral palsy foundation of some sort? I, I don't know where he carried him to, but man, the awareness that he raised for how difficult it is for people with that particular uh what do they call it? Is it a disease? Or do they call it like a disability? I think it's a disability. It's probably a disability because you can't, you really just can't walk, right? Yeah. Like you just lose a lot function of your muscles and all mm -hmm. sorts. And so it's probably it is a disability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the the cool thing about it is, is that he did this for an aware, but basically saying um, this is like a struggle of what my brother and others have to go through um, yeah. to pretty much get Places. Just to do anything, just, like, just to anything. walk across the room, like it's that hard for them. Is basically what he was trying to say. He said it was the hardest thing he's ever done. Mm -hmm. Which sure, yeah. carrying someone fifty-seven miles would be very difficult. Yes. But yeah, he did it to to ways to raise awareness. Man, I need to learn how to talk. Mm -hmm. He did it to raise awareness, and uh, he raised a lot of awareness. There so was a lot of people are, aware of what's going on now. Where are we going to take it where we're talking about the man that walked 21 miles to work every single day? Mm -hmm. Or the 15-year-old boy that walks 57 miles carrying his brother? What do you mean? That's Which, like apples and oranges. True. A guy was doing it because he had to get to work. Yeah, too. And this guy was doing it to raise awareness for how difficult it is for people he wanted to. with this uh, disability to function in society. Mm -hmm. uh, not that they can't or don't. Um, there's a lot of people with that they function well. Um, he was just trying to raise awareness for it, you know. He wasn't asking people to give him money or anything. He was just like, "Hey, you know, this is hard." And it's also good. It's also cool that he does that with his brother, you know. Yeah, That's I worked. Awesome. I worked with a guy with cerebral palsy, and he was one of the nicest guys. He had tattoos everywhere, and he would uh, tear tickets for people. And yeah, he was he was a nice guy. Does he still work with him? Kyle? No, he does not. Okay. You remember him? Yeah. Yeah, Kyle. Yeah. Cool. I'm over at the theater all the time. Speaking of which. Jurassic World comes out this weekend. I'll be over there tomorrow night. Tomorrow. They're going to do a... Uh, Thursday, 7 p.m. showing. We're going to do that. The first showing. Are you going to do a live stream? No. I might periscope or something a little bit while we're waiting in line, but I'll see. Okay. I'll have to see how we're feeling, you know. How, how successful does that happen when you did it for... Uh... It was too dark when I tried to do Afraid of Avengers because we were already in the theater, mm -hmm. so my phone was just like, ah. 
it was, it was like that. But I'll, I'm going to try again. Okay. So I'll, it'll probably be on my personal Twitter. But yeah, I'll try again and see if we can get anything going. But yeah, so we're going to see Jurassic World. Are you coming? I am considering it. I guess you, I'll... You better hurry up and get those tickets. Mm-hmm. I've heard that places are selling out. I did that when you guys wanted to see the, the Avengers. I know. As soon as you guys said we're going, Wait, it was sold out. Way too long. Oh, man. I for, Yeah. Yeah, you got to check. I had a buddy text me today. He's like, yeah, I'm coming. I was like, you better get your tickets because yeah. I already bought mine. So... Is it 3D or is it IMAX? It's IMAX 3D. Right. So it's, it's 3D, unfortunately, which... Not a big fan. It, 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 3D is like, it could be great or it could not be great. You remember last week we talked about me not being able to rate movies? Yes. Yeah, that's, I, that's kind of how 3D is. Like, if 3D is good, I'm fine with it, but if it's bad, I'm like, this is stupid. Best... And, okay, let's say this. Best 3D movie, best IMAX 3D movie. What would you say? Uh, I mean, if it's in 3D, I'd rather see it in IMAX. Okay, what would be what would be the best three D movie you've seen? Because your brother swears by Coraline. I oh, see. I didn't see Coraline in theater. Oh, the best three D movie that I saw. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I really don't remember which movies I saw in three D. Honestly, I think the best one was probably. A lot of people say Avatar was the best because Avatar was good, but the whole movie was CGI. Exactly. So I mean, I think any animated movie is good. So I would say probably Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs was good in three D. That was good. Uh, that was good in 3D. Uh, you know, Toy Story actually had a really good conversion in the 3D. Yes. The surprisingly. Oldest. I remember we saw that. Yeah, Toy Story 1 and 2, the back-to-back showing. They mm-hmm. actually had a really good conversion to mm-hmm. 3D. Uh, but I don't know. Um, but the best IMAX movie, I don't know. Mission Impossible 4 was really good in IMAX. I was going to say that. I've had people tell me that it is absolutely amazing when he jumped off Oh, that. man. Well, what about... Um, Dark Knight Rises was really good in IMAX good. also. Uh, Meta Black 3, when he jumps off the building. Yeah, I got that. Was that even in IMAX? <clears throat> yes, it was. I guess I, I guess it was okay. I don't remember it being like... Like I said, the, one of the most amazing... And this is because also it was the first movie that played and showed in IMAX. But Mission Impossible 4 was just that was done really that well. Right there, where the, the theater I used to work, that was the very, very first movie. It came out December 15th. Yeah, first that was movie the in first IMAX. First movie they played in IMAX. And uh, it was really well. But, you know, you go from watching a normal movie theater to an IMAX, even a smaller IMAX like they have there, because they have one of the smaller IMAX screens. Mm-hmm. The audio, though, is still on par with all the other audio as far as the voltage and amperage the, and all that stuff. The audio, there are six speakers behind the screen. Then they also have speakers in the back of the theater that pinpoint to see how many people are, are in the theater and measures the volume that should be produced. The only way for them to turn it down is that they actually call the IMAX office. Right. It's all controlled by IMAX. And the uh, sound quality IMAX. is amazing. The bass is never overpowering, mm-hmm. but it's, it's good. Like It's just... That's why I go to IMAX, honestly, is more for the audio mm-hmm. than the visual, honestly. It was in theater number one. We would get complaints from theater number two that it was too loud. Nothing new about it. Exactly. Like, IMAX is like, it has to be this way. And it was usually a lot of the older people that would complain, especially if they're in theater number one as well, and oh, it was man. too loud. But for you us... You ever seen an IMAX movie with older people that are sound sensitive? They started, like, bunching up their... It's, it's their sad and funny at the same it time. Is. I don't like to make fun of older people because we're going to be old one day, Chris. We're going to be hip, though. I don't know, man. I think every old person thinks they're going to be hip because they laugh about the generation before them. I'm going to start. I'm still going to listen to hardcore music when I'm old. I know, but that won't be hip anymore. That's what I'm saying. They still listen to music that was popular when they were young, probably. True. We'll see. My scene isn't very popular. Well. Anyways. Anyways. So, yeah. uh, Getting old. That's not what we were talking about. No. What we are talking about is we're going to take a break. Yes. And then we're going to come back. And we're going to talk about a glowing water bottle. We're going to talk about toilets and elevators. And we're going to talk about the funniest video we've seen this week. So don't go away. We'll be right back.